Hey guys. All right. So I have um, a story to tell you about boundaries and boundaries is something that just, it just keeps coming up in my life right now. And so I was just getting the nudge. It was like, tell this story. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. I went from being someone who had like no boundaries, no boundaries at all. People pleaser mania, the total fawn trauma response from childhood where you become a people pleaser and you just do whatever anybody else wants you to do in order to feel safe and loved and secure. And it was bad. It was real bad. Um, not only are most women, I feel like and they're not really encouraged to have assertive qualities and speak their truth. But on top of it being a very dogmatic religion, my whole life where it's just like, stay here in your lane. This is how you think. This is how you should be. This is how you should feel. This is how you should show up. Like it was just so bad. And I had like a very rough childhood and like just all of it combined. I was just like the consummate people pleaser. Okay. And it really honestly took me to rock bottom, rock bottom. I literally lost everything. Some of you know my story. Some of you don't, but basically I left that religion. I got divorced shortly after, and I got into a really, really unhealthy relationship. And I know the word narcissist gets thrown around too much, but I'm telling you, this was like the most psychotic shit that you could ever <laughs> imagine. And I just agreed to anything he said, anything he said, I was just like, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I lost everything. I lost my life savings. I gave him access to all of my credit cards because he already had a bankruptcy, but I just said yes to everything and just let him spend all my money. And even to the point, so long story short, literally lost every penny to my name. I did not have one cent when I walked out of that relationship and I had nowhere to live and I was in the middle of a bankruptcy and about to lose my car. Okay. So that's where not having boundaries took me. <laughs> and it really was the, I'm grateful for it because it was so bad that it forced me to wake up. It was like, girl, you got to be real here. There's something going on inside of you that's led to this result in your life. And it really is what was the catalyst for my personal growth journey and allows me to do the work that I'm doing today. And I want to share with you how I got boundaries because I feel like I got real good boundaries now and it's been a lot of work. And so I want to share, I just felt really compelled to share this story. So right after this whole thing, by the way, I had to live with a friend for several months. I couldn't even have my kids. I had to ask my ex-husband to have my kids full time for a while. It was so humbling. It was so humbling as a lifelong, like overachiever, right? Cause it's probably part of that <laughs> fond people pleaser response. But I'm also, I think naturally driven, but as somebody who always like had my act together and was this like superstar in school and you know, the homeowner and landlord and boat owner. And you know, we had all of perfect, perfect life. This was so humbling for me and it was so good for me. And right after that, what, right after I moved out of my friend's house, I finally got this little teeny tiny basement apartment that luckily somebody like had faith in me and rented to me. I'm in this phase of like, I was like, I'm going to call this place my launch pad because I'm rebuilding my entire life out of this little basement apartment. And I did. And while I was living there, I got invited to a mastermind. Okay. This is a very like big dog mastermind. I could barely afford it. I literally put, I, I just had the strongest intuitive feeling like do it. And just enough money came into my account. I literally spent everything I had to go to this mastermind. I just felt so strongly about it. And when I got there, so it's a bunch of like, you know, these, a lot of these guys are making hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like just getting started in my entrepreneurial journey. And it was at a ranch. And I really, if you have an issue with that, actually, I think anybody could benefit from this story. I will never forget it. It is such an important lesson. And I feel like stories are an easy way to remember boundaries or, or lessons. I mean, so we're at this like ranch. It's kind of like a <laughs> goal. It's the equivalent, I would say, of a country club, but for ran rich guys, <laughs> business guys. And it was a ranch. And it was so cool. So we were in the middle of their, you know, arena thing and they've got this corral and the cowboy guy, who's also like an amazing businessman was showing us how he breaks a horse. Okay. How he trains a horse. So they had this wild Mustang come into this little, sorry guys, I don't know horse terminology, a little round thing, <laughs> corral, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. And he's showing us the signs that he looks for. And, um, he's like, the, there's two steps. First, we have to establish trust. And then we have to establish respect. And so he would just, he just stood there in the middle of this circle in this Mustang, this horse is going nuts. It's just rearing up and like freaking out and just running around like crazy. And he would just stand there really still and steady right in the middle. No big deal. Just very calm, cool, calm, collected energy. And he just had this little like switch thing that he just kind of like, he was like, I'm just doing my thing over here. 
And the horse, he's like, what I'm looking for is the horse is going to start coming towards me. And I know I've established trust when it starts to lower its head down, um, like make its ears like go down. And there were like a couple other signs. And we watched this happen in real time. It was so cool. The, the horse would go over and it would like start to check him out and be like, no, no, no. And it would like run away and start doing that. He'd just stay steady. And eventually the horse got comfortable and he built that trust. And before we knew it, the horse is like letting him pet it. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. He's like, now it's time to establish respect. And so he started giving it some commands after a little while. And long story short, like within, seriously, I feel like it was only like 10 minutes. This horse is literally like walking around him in circles. He's like training it and it's doing like all these commands he wants it to do with just him gesturing like this. I was like, holy crap. I'm getting all these lessons in my mind. I'm typing in my phone and in my notes. I'm like, this is so blah, blah, blah. And I, all of a sudden I hear, yeah, you, you with the cow, cowgirl hat. <laughs> And I'm like, uh oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was writing down. He wanted me to come in and do that with his horse. Okay. Hang with me. Cause this, this is really freaking cool. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never even like really been around horses. I'm scared to do this. I go in there and he's like uh, reminding me all the steps of how to establish trust with his horse. And I'm the trust thing. Oh my gosh. Like everybody watching was like, wow. Like, cause she's just rubbing all over me. Like, you know, this trust part was real easy. And then I start doing the respect part and I start giving her commands and she's doing everything I want her to. And I'm like, holy cow, this is so freaking cool. I'm just like stepping that way and, and nudging with my head and she's going in circles around me. And then all of a sudden she stops and she won't do anything I say. So I'm like doing the same stuff. And she's like, Meh. <laughs> and just standing there. And I'm like, so I go back over and I'm petting her. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. Like we're friends, you know? <laughs> and then I go back to my little spot and I'm trying to do it. And she's like, mm, not doing anything that I want. And the cowboy comes over to me and he's like, you gotta be, you gotta be very firm with her, you know? And I'm like trying and she's not doing anything. And then he stops the whole thing and he goes, this guy's, this is like, three months, no, probably like six months after I lost everything. Okay. From this relationship in which I was people pleasing and had no boundaries like crazy. And he goes to the whole group. So Tara here has been through, Tara here has been, uh, taken advantage of in her life. Haven't you Tara? <laughs> and I was like, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know how I know that? And I was like, mm -mm. and he's like, because when the horse stopped giving you respect, you still gave her love. And he's like, don't do that. When people don't respect you, you don't still keep giving them love. And he's like, I bet you do that with your children. I bet you do that with everybody in your life. Don't you? And I was like, wow. I started crying. And I, I was like kind of embarrassed, you know? <laughs> I'm in front of all these like big dog entrepreneur, amazing people that are like changing the world. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I go over to get in line after lunch after that. And there were three men that were like amazing. I, like I super respect them. Like one of them did the polar bear campaign for Coca-Cola. I mean, there's a level of people in there, right? He's a marketer. And he had tears in his eyes. And so did the other two. And they were like, we can all relate to that. We have all been there. He's like, thank you for showing that to us. And so I'm sharing this story with you guys because that lesson of when people don't respect you, don't keep giving them love was so instrumental for me in getting past my lack of boundaries. So when I started to see in my life, like that person is disrespecting me, my old fawn response, my people pleaser response is do even more for them to get them to like me or love me because I'm not enough in myself to be able to have this like strength to be like, no. No. <laughs> right. And so that was such a great lesson for me. And the other thing I wanted to share. So I'm asking you guys, you know, if this resonates with you at all, if you can see that in yourself, watch for if people don't respect you, don't go am amp it up with even more love. Like be real about that. Like, no, that's the boundaries. You're not respecting me. So I wish you the best in your life. Really wish you the best, but you don't get to be in my energy because you're not treating me with basic human respect. That has been so instrumental for me to remember. Um, the next thing is uh, doing the work of Byron Katie. If you're somebody who doesn't have boundaries, the work of Byron Katie is so instrumental in that. And then I also have two podcasts that I highly recommend in terms of boundaries. One, they're both on my Inside Out Health podcast. One is Terry Cole. She's literally, her book is called Boundary Boss and she has a boundaries course. It is so good. Just listen to the podcast with Terry Cole, T-E-R-R-I. And the other one is with um, Robert Glover. They're both um, therapists. 
um, that I've taken things like worldwide. They teach people all over the world this. They're so good. They are so good. I'm honored to have had them on my podcast. His name is Robert Glover and, um, his book is called No More Mr. Nice Guy. Getting, I think the podcast, I called it ridding ourselves of nice guy syndrome. And it's the same thing with women. And it's showing like, why do I do this thing where someone's not treating me with respect and I keep giving them love anyway? What, what's going on there? What am I getting out of that? right? And the healing that needs to happen within ourselves. Because for me, the people pleasing stuff, it helped me feel safe, right? I, I, I didn't have wholeness within myself. I didn't realize that, but in order to make sure that I was likable and lovable and safe, I would do whatever anybody wanted because that helped me feel like I couldn't bear the thought of somebody not liking me or being mad at me. Like, oh my gosh, that was terrifying. (laughs) Now I'm like, well, your feelings are your, your, like, that's your thing, not mine. And all I can do is is what's right by me. And if you're not going to show me basic human respect, bye. (laughs) It's so easy now. And it comes from like this healing inside of ourselves. You know, for me, it's been healing inside myself of knowing that I, I love myself. I have such a beautiful relationship with myself. It's taken a lot of work. I put massive amounts of time, money, energy. I do work on myself every single day. I meditate, I do gratitude, I do my own personal development program that I teach and hire, and I say nice things to myself. I got my own back. I'm like my own coach, right? It's just like when I'm running and I'm like, come on, girl, you got it. It's That's, that's my self-talk now. So anyway, if you feel like you're struggling with boundaries and you keep letting people like creep back into your life, or the, the biggest way to know if you don't have good boundaries is if you're resentful towards other people. <laughs> people with no boundaries are resentful towards other people. And I, I can say this from a place of knowing, and it's really because you are the one not speaking your truth, not being totally honest, still going to stuff when they invite you, when you don't want to, that's on you, right? Not being honest. I'll be real. I went on a date last weekend and it was a no go for me. And I was very honest. I was like, here's why it was a no go for me. The end. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore. (laughs) Okay. So it's like so much, you know, and and I I don't have any hard feelings at all. It's just just not a match. And I wish you the best in your life. And that's all. (laughs) So whether it's work or like, oh, core family things, like you keep going to your family dinners and you can't stand your family and you're all resentful and you're judging the crap out of them. Stop going. Be honest. Say, I'm not in a good place to be around family right now. I hope you can understand it's not personal. I'm just going through some growth work right now. I love you guys. I wish you the best. I'm just, I can't do that right now. So choosing, it's like, if you've been a chronic people pleaser, it's going to be very mechanical. you like, you literally have to break, have a, like a break in time where when somebody's like, Hey, do you want to blah, blah, blah. And I know your knee jerk reaction. If you're a chronic people pleaser like me is yeah, totally. You haven't even looked at your calendar yet. You have not even thought you have not even thought in your own mind if you want to do that or not. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. So it's mechanical. It's hold on a second. One, do I even have the bandwidth to do this? What do I have going on this weekend? And two, do I want to do that? And if you're doing stuff that you don't want to do, you're people pleasing and you're doing it. So you get your good person card, your nice person card. It's selfish. It's actually selfish in its root. And when you stop doing that and you just say no, and you don't need a big old excuse, you know, the people pleasers, cause they give you this really long drawn out reason for why they can't do something. And you're like, holy hell, like just say no, like it's okay. I don't, you don't have to do that. Okay. That's how you know you're a people pleaser. So it's going to have to be this. Do, do I have the bandwidth and do I want to? And you know what? I love my friends that are honest, honest like this because I know when they're hanging out with me, they want to. <laughs> Do you want somebody hanging out with you because they feel bad and they're pitying you? (laughs) Or do you want someone to hang out with you because they want to? So same thing with us, you know? So anyway, just sharing that whole story because I I know people pleasing and not having boundaries is a big issue because I work with it all the time in my coaching and my friends and I talk about it. So I just want to share that. So, you know, that horse story, remember that if someone's not treating you with respect, they don't still keep getting your love. Draw a boundary. Let them know. Boundaries are on us. And when we don't have boundaries, we tend to blame other people for stepping on our boundaries that don't exist. So that's my thoughts for the day. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. (laughs) Have a great weekend, guys. Bye.